wait till you see what I have for you today. It's just something super unique. You know what this is? It's a Honda Ridgeline. But if you take a look at here, does that look a little different to you compared to the stock height? Well, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is a lifted Honda Ridgeline. Can you believe that? And you know on the channel here, if you watch, one of the things that we really promote are factory or better. So if we make some changes like we do, we lifted our Honda CRV and we want it to look like it came from the factory. Or maybe I should say, this is how it should have came from the factory. This doesn't only have a lift on it, it's got a front axle relocation that moves it forward so you can get these bigger tires on there. Okay, this is that Coeur d'Alene Honda. And these guys were nice enough to not only let me review this, but they gave me the keys. I can't believe it. Let's check this out because I want to know what the, what the ride's like on this. But if you take a look at this, one of the main things you're going to see under here is this right here. Check that out. That's the axle relocation. So it pushes this tire forward and then that is the lift. It's part of the lift anyway. So this is going to give you three and a half on the front and three in the back so that it's level. Now, why do, would you need to move this axle forward? Let me show you. Maybe we can see on this other side a little bit better here. Yeah, I think the light's a little bit better over here. So it's this clearance. This is a unibody and the frame is right behind this. So you don't have any of this plastic that's hollow in here to cut out. And this tires were rubbing. So the kicking that forward gives it just enough room to clear. Now the, the manager, this is actually the, uh, the used car manager's vehicle. This is a, a 2022 Honda Ridgeline, by the way. He's added, these are 30 and a half inch tires on the front. Now you can get 31 and a half on this, but if you do that, you have to do a couple things. You've actually got to take out part of this front fender. It's going to rub right here and it's going to rub a little bit in the back. Now he's also put some spacers on this. We've got an uh, inch and a half inch spacers and these are 30 and a half and it's, it's clearing just fine. Doesn't this look crazy? Does this not change dramatically the way this truck looks? Look at that. We'll go look at one of the other ones. Now, uh, the, the factory height on these is about, I believe it's about 30 inches. Actually, let's take a look at this one over here since there happens to be a comparable right here that we can go take a look at. So this is the factory right here. Let's see what we got here. Like 33 and an eighth. So factory on the front is 33 and an eighth. The back's a little bit taller on these, but let's take a look at this one. And see, we got pretty excited about this. I can't believe how this looks like a truck. Okay, let's take a look here. Look at that, 36 and a half. That's wild. And the back should be about the same. Let's check out the back. The back is actually taller. Okay, so you get your, you still get that factory rake. Look on here, let's look at that again, 38. So it's a little bit closer to level, but not exactly. Now the back here, see the spacers on the back right there? Now the kit is a Traxta or Trexta, I might be pronouncing that wrong, but one of the cool things about these guys at Corley and Honda that I really appreciate is that they're doing some customization to your rigs now. These guys are also putting a skid plate on the front of this, which he told me was in the back of the truck. And since I have the keys, we're gonna take a little peek and see what we see here. Let's open this up. There it is. Oh, look at that. That is red. That's really cool. Come on, look. Sort of maybe. Yeah, look at that. So this has red stitching and it some looks like some of the seat actually has the red in it as well, which is pretty cool. Oh, look, red in the, in the cup holders, the plastic there. So that's gonna look pretty awesome because he's gonna have a red accent on here. I mean, he had those powder coated red those did not come red, so you had those powder coated. And then they're gonna put the red skid plate over right here. I think he's gonna put a real low profile, um, what do you call those, bug, bug deflector on that one. I should look pretty awesome. I tell you, oh, and, and then he tinted the front windshield. I tell you, one of the things I'm really curious about though, is the ride on this. Did that mess with the ride? It's not supposed to, but you never know. Sometimes when you're doing these, as you know, if you've been following us on the channel, it does change a lot. And look at this. These are factory step sides. Ridge line. All right, let's take this baby for a ride and see how it does. Let's take a look at first impressions in here. Again, this is the black edition. And I really do like the leather stitching, the red st stitching, I should say. 
Okay, this is pretty cool. So this is a very similar feel initially to um, Renee's car, which is the Honda CRV. But let's fire this baby up. Economy mode button over here. We've got a lot of the same things um, that we'd have in the other Hondas that you're familiar with. Lane mitigation, traction control, collision, um, parking, that type of thing. This has also got a cargo light and that must be a defroster. So very similar controls, which you would expect, right? You wouldn't think you'd get into one Honda and it'd be significantly different from another. But so like let's it. take this for a quick little jaunt. He never told me how far we could drive or not drive. So we won't abuse it. We won't abuse it, but we are gonna take a little peek around the block and see if we can find a bump or two. So this is obviously very different from the CRV. This does not have a shifter. This has got park neutral and I don't even know how you do drive. <laughs> I don't know how to drive this baby. Drive. That's how you do this. What? This is the first time I've driven one of these. I am like, that's pretty funny. I get, I'm like, how do you drive this? Where's the shifter? Okay. I believe now we're in go mode. Let's go see what we got. Okay. There's a little bump here. So we're just going to go over that. Okay. A little bit of noise. Now this is freshly installed. So you can expect to hear some grommet noise and things like that that's going on. And I could hear it there. I was wondering if that was the case. Okay, here we go. Let's get down the road and not embarrass ourselves. <laughs> they don't know what we're doing. They probably think you and I are just having a conversation. All right, here we go. One of the most important aspects of driving, of course, is power. How is this? And this is a notably bigger engine than on the CRV. So let's uh, let's go through this intersection here. You know, in steering, it doesn't feel any different at all in the way that it turns. It feels very, very factory-like in steering. So that's a good test. It passes that one. Now, the next will be a little, a little bit of acceleration. We won't go crazy. This is not our vehicle. We'll be very respectable, but we got to test it. And I think there's a good spot right up here. Nothing like a good roundabout to test the cornering, huh? Like, how's it? How's it steer around these babies? Great. Great. I would, if I didn't know it was lifted and somebody said it was from the factory so far, I will believe them. All right, let's test a little bit of acceleration. Oh, oh, hey, that's not so bad. That, uh, that was uh, noticeable. You had to wait for the turbo to kick in there, but uh, not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right, now we need to find a bump. Can we find a bump or two? Right there, we could have found a bump. You know what? We're just going to turn around. There ain't no traffic here. We're going to turn around right here. See that little curb right there? That's perfect. That's actually taking this off road a little bit. Oh, there's no way a normal factory would have cleared that. That was awesome. I mean, that was pretty cool. I hear a little bit more like that grama noise and back up on the road. That was great. That was pretty awesome. Again, we're, this is not our vehicle, so we're being very respectable, but that was enough that it would have scraped like nobody's business on a factory vehicle uh, on factory ridge line so there are tons of reviews out there on all of the little details about how different things work on vehicles and those are really great because you want to know that stuff we like to cover the stuff that you don't always get like what does it feel does it seem cool is it fun to drive and can it jump well we didn't jump this baby but we took it off a pretty steep curb so this one has a lift so tune in when we do uh reviews on on new vehicles because we look for interesting stuff and i'm saying this one definitely categorizes itself finds itself in the interesting category extremely so that was pretty great okay we we've driven now around now a little bit we got to take this back again it only has you know what we say 40 miles on this thing so we uh no 20 miles oh my gosh now i've put in another now it's well i can't keep this 
I gotta get this back. I don't wanna take it back and have it go from 20 miles to like 40 or something. We've only put a couple on it, so we're being careful, but how awesome is that? Let's get this puppy back. Let's pop the hood and see what we see in here. All right, this is their V6. So they've been using this one for a long time. Boy, there's not much to see here. It's really kind of closed in and compact, isn't it? It looks, it looks really clean. It's not a whole lot you can see. You can kind of squeeze down past it. Have a look at this detail too. This is another one that you can get from the back. But that's kind of cool because if you're trying to make this look much more truck-like, there's some loud equipment over there. That is a good one. I think the the, the low profile uh, bug shield that's gonna put on the front, definitely that skid plate and of course, without a doubt, the lift. But that's another pretty neat thing I wanna show you on this one too. When you can go someplace and customize your vehicle the way you want it, man, that gets my vote. And when they do it in a way that makes it look like factory or better, now you get two thumbs up. So I'm gonna tell them about these guys again, Coeur d'Alene Honda, if you want to customize your vehicle, not just the Ridgeline, but any of them, these guys are all about it. There's one more thing I want to show you before you go to. Check this out. This is a neat little touch because this is a unibody vehicle. So a typical truck like my Raptor over there, which everybody's seen on the channel, that has that line between the bed and the cab. That line between the bed and the cab is because those are two separate components. The, the body mounts down to the frame and the bed mounts down to the frame. That is not what these are. This is unibody, meaning there is no frame. They're much more challenging to do lifts like this on because of that. And so the whole body acts as the frame itself, the shell, if you will. And so it does not have a split, but look what these guys did. They put a little line down there to give it that same look and feel as a truck. I do like that as a nice touch. So check out some of our other videos. How awesome was that? I love this. Have yourself a great rest of the day. It's Uncle Jake with Motors and Mischief, taking you out with a fish bump, a friendship. Check out some of these other videos on Hondas. See you later. Whoop out. You know, when you get to buy a vehicle, was that a recording? Okay, Joel, so I don't know what would be a good thumbnail, but let's try to do this one. Look at this. Yeah, okay, there you go. Work with that.